Okay, so having determined that the um, the method of having the the figures um, all of the same shape um, is preferable to having them mixed. And what we are going to be doing now is rebasing. And I hate to do this um, because it seems like we do this all the time, basing and rebasing and everything. And it's just as nonstop. Uh, so that's a good thing that uh, we um, use hot glue and uh, acrylic bases. Because what that does is it enables us to uh, remove, as a, and uh, of course the acrylic is the whole reason that it, that it was successful, to remove the figures again once they were put on. And um, by having all the figures be the same on every stand, it, it appears to it appears it's much more attractive. It looks like it's more attractive. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're just going to rebase these guys. Um, now, I'm wondering if I can pull. Yeah, it looks like I can. With some risk to the figure, if I can pull the figure off as opposed to cutting them, then I'm going to do it. This one looks like it's not going to come off that easily. It is a risk because you'll wreck the figure trying to pull them off. You can probably yank them pretty pretty well, and that's exactly what I just did there. So let me try another yanking. I just don't, because there's certain risks involved, and that's so dangerous. This guy will not, he will not come off of there. That is interesting. And yet, look at that. <laughs> I couldn't pull him off, but boy, he just jumped right off of there. So, incredible. Um... So marching guys, officers, advancing with the bayonet at the hip, shooting guys, flags, and other uh, figures. The, the uh, regiments right now that are just shooting, I'm going to leave those aside because those are pretty much accurately done. Uh, the ones with the bayonets advancing at the hip, however, and I know I've done, I've done this before. I'm going to collect them all because they have a back rank of marching guys. And I'm also removing these because of the greater density that I'm going to make. And of course you can see these plates have to be cleaned up. It's really interesting. You can't seem to pull the guys off, but you can snap them off. Oh, in some cases, no wonder. In some cases, these guys are metal. And in other cases, the figure, the sculptures are just not that great. Um, they're just not that good. So, kind of making a determination as to what to do. worry about cleaning up the bases after there are admittedly some figures in this that are IMAX and IMAX has come up with well in their sculpting they had created some pretty weird sculpts the men are running with the rifle in one hand and it just doesn't look appropriate it looks strange
I don't know where they came up with that, who came up with that kind of sculpt, but um, so you got to be really careful because you could slip and uh, cut yourself pretty bad. So you got to be careful. And watch, I'm going to do that right now. I'll cut myself. No, I uh, just got to be careful. I'm going to collect these plates and then just clean them all up in mass. I don't want to wreck them. They're fairly expensive. Some of these figures, the bases were wrecked and had to be repaired as they were being applied. Here's an example. This officer, his base was unfortunately cut accidentally. And I tried to save him, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to save him again. Looks like I might, once I slice him up like that. Unfortunately, the, the truth of the matter is, a lot of these figures um, uh, uh, some of these figures don't aren't uh, frequent enough in the in the sprue there's just like one or two or three of them and you need several boxes in order to get enough to make a single unit all look the same this has been the big problem of all manufacturing when it comes to plastic soldiers because the metal guys, uh, people that produce metal seem to not uh, have that kind of restriction because they don't plastic injection mold on sprues. And that's the problem here. You want to have the ability of buying figures all the same. Uh, sculpt and that's only possible it seems with companies that don't produce the figures on sprues all right um, yeah the shooting guys I will uh, here's an example of a shooting mostly firing I'll put four guys in the front I've only got three there now to give them a little more bulk Because we, like I said, we decided that the bulk look is better than not. So this will be an example. You see, when you scrape that hot glue off, it comes off pretty good from this acrylic. And the uh, knife doesn't seem to be uh, affecting the acrylic badly either. So before putting back on, we'll inspect the figure bases for integrity. They look pretty good. These, uh, I have to admit, these guys that are reloading, I am not a fan of. Again, these are the Italeri Confederates. Um, he's got a feather, uh, ostrich feather or something, in his... Um, uh, Hat. You know, and actually, in some cases, I want to just remove the officer. These guys really fly off sometimes. It's really interesting. And some of these figures I have um, added my own backpacks because I felt that they just didn't have any, <laughs> as a matter of fact, backpacks. So I got some hat industry miniatures. 
and uh, took the backpacks off while well, they came separate and then mounted the uh, backpacks to the figures. All right, that's good. For this segment, we'll come back in a second. Um, admittedly, part three, admittedly, um, the temptation to just mount these guys onto their bases uh, without painting them is, is strong. Well, not because I'm uh, impatient to get them into the game or anything, uh, but because uh, after painting so many millions, <laughs> after painting so many thousands of miniatures, it I almost get to the point where I'm like, enough is enough already. What's the point? Uh, just rudiment, paint them rudimentary, um, and and let the chips fall where they may, and then at a later time. Uh, paint them with more detail. Well, here's the problem with that. What is a later time? Right? And everybody knows this, but no one says it. What is the later time that you're going to catch up and fix them up later? Well, it, you know, okay, can't answer it because I can, uh, sure I can, but I won't. Uh, it's, the truth is never. Okay? There's never a better time. So you either do them all, Either do all these guys and 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 put them on and be done with it, or don't, or, or just put them on and, and just and wait. I mean, use them, but just wait for a better time. I don't know. Okay, I, I the truth. Okay, so somebody might say, well, what do you feel like? I kind of feel like painting them, but then I like, uh, what if I just painted them as after they're mounted, uh, painting only the things that you can see? Wouldn't that be a heck of a lot easier? And the truth of the matter is, yeah, it would be. So if you go ahead and go to the effort of mounting them with the hot glue um, to the bases, then paint them afterwards, there might be something to that. So even if we were to say, let's do that, uh, we can take an example and um, we'll, uh, we'll paint them uh, like that. Just, you know, um, on the fly after they're mounted. But here's, the, again, obviously the problem with that is that you have to get to the base of the base. Uh, you have to get to the figure's base to paint it green. Because the base is obviously the same color as the figure, which in this case is gray. And uh, so you got to kind of get your, uh, uh, your paintbrush in there and to paint that green. And if you're painting it while it's on the stand, you might get some green on the stand. Well, that's not so bad, right? Because the, as these are acrylic, they can the paint can scrape off very easily, and if you're careful, uh, you won't get that much paint on there at all, if if any at all. So, the faster way to do this, the most accurate, the 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 way that it assures they all be done correctly is to not paint them after they're mounted. Paint them before they are mounted, and then you can just whip through them, you know, one after the other. And also, I should say, uh, in case you uh, are, are watching this and you get startled by a noise, it's the, my sump pump is right close to me, and it'll go off because we've had so much rain, although maybe not now, but at some point in the future it might go off and it'll be like a huge flushing uh, for a few seconds. Uh, so just, you know, I'll just say that right away. Don't be startled. Okay, so um, let's look at these guys. And uh, also, I should also say, because I have so many dogs, that there's going to be some barking in the background, which you probably just heard. Anyway, so let's take an example of uh, these guys that we're looking at and uh, paint them um, uh, quickly. Well, rudimentary. Pants, tops, uh, hats, uh, rifle. And then see what happens. What appears to be an accurate scale musket. The Strelitz guys are accentuated, dramatic, carrying very thick uh, muskets. So when you think about it, um, if you want to look at it too closely, you'll say, eh, you should keep them all the same. The sculpts should be the same. But uh, in this case, what we're doing here it was, is we're going to illustrate um, how it can be achieved. Excuse me, this guy is no, no not cooperating, how it can be achieved to uh, vary these guys. So let's take from Peter to pay Paul a couple of these guys out of the equation, swap them around a little bit, 
like for instance, there's a unit over here, the Second Missouri, as it's labeled, that has all kepis, and in the front. And so we can take two of them. No, uh, no, it doesn't have. It only has two kepis. The rest are all slouch hat. Okay, look at these guys. No, same. Okay. Um, not too bad. Uh, some of these guys. Okay. So let's just take some of these guys away. Take one or two of these guys away. Substitute with a uh, a kepi from another unit. Uh, let's leave that one. Let's take this guy. Just so we spread out the wonderfulness of those Italian sculpts. something like that could be acceptable all right you can get an idea and this one is the same whereas all these guys are slouch hats and if we look do we have any other advancing guys that are something tells me we should go look at our existing inventory um, because that feels like we've got untapped resources. There might be more men than we realize in our finished units. So let me go and quickly have a look at some of the units we've got on the table in the other room. I have a feeling that they can be swapped. Turns out we don't actually have that many at all uh, that we can rob from. So it looks like this is actually going to be what these men are. Um, so let's go ahead and start painting them, and then uh, we'll. Uh, it should also be noted, by the way, some of these guys are six in the front rank, and some are five.
So you see that kind of added a little bit of variety to that unit. And meanwhile, we're fixing the 17th Missouri to have a mix. Now the figures are all of the same. They've got, they're advancing with the bayonet. Kepi's mixed, which is pretty good. And of course, uh, forget the what the flags say. We don't. We're not concerned about what the flags say right now. But for the most part, we want to keep the variety going. Let's work on these guys because they're pretty much already done. And we'll line up some other guys and do them as well. Now it's also true, by the way, that some of these guys, I should say the majority of these guys, do not have backpacks. They have um, blanket rolls. So the blanket roll as part of the typical uniform became the norm when it was determined that it was lighter to stuff everything in a blanket roll than it was to wear a box on your back. A box on your back. Sounds kind of funny. Anyway, but that's what it was. It was a box, okay? It had all your personal belongings on it. And, um... It was a box. Cardboard, leather, whatever. Anyway... So, uh, that's how it uh, either was inspired to change or changed over time. Let's take another guy away. So you see, there's an interesting little bit of a variety that can be uh, that can happen. Now, I am not convinced at this moment that this is better than having all the same guys in the front rank. I don't know. I am not too sure. Now that I look at this, I'm not sure. I mean, there's five guys, and there's six guys, and there's five guys. I don't know. And the proof will be in the pudding. Okay, after uh, they're painted, perhaps it'll make a difference. So let's just go ahead and um, paint them up. I have an additional figure here that I don't know really what to do with. I don't know if I should add them to an existing unit to make it a six-figure front rank or not. Do we have room? It almost looks like we don't have the room for another guy. Now that I've moved him, it seems a waste to... Uh, Possibility by removing one of these guys. Five figures in the front rank may actually be a better way to go. So, if that's the case, I just instantly created another appropriately. moving marching unit 
it's off camera you can't see it right at this moment but it's better I've got four five guy uh, four guys in the front rank I need one more I need one more guy um, everybody here's five men five men five men five 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 these are all fivers five 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 maybe I can go with the guy who's advancing in the front I don't want to use one of these overcoat kepi figures but I may have to gonna do that here's what I was gonna do I was gonna add this guy you see this isn't a tallery and he's got overcoat no bayonet so that was unfortunate that they sculpted this guy and with a nice overcoat with a cape and a frock coat but uh, but no bayonet so that's too bad. All right, so back to the painting. I don't want to break that up because that's a five man front rank there. Um, I'm finishing off one of the units here. So let's do Shoulder, if I remember, shoulder port arms, one, two, three, four, five, uh, four in the back rank, one, two, three, four in the back rank, because of the flag guy, and then one, uh, one, two, three, four in the back rank, and then now we need, so that's three units, and we need front marching guys, so one, two, three, Four, five, five, uh, four, five, four, five, four, five, four, five, four. All right. And so, if I look in our inventory, just to make sure I'm not skipping anybody, it looks like that's it. I'm trying to utilize some of the inventory that we've got here. The guys are marching. Those are high, I believe it's called high port arms. It's right up to their shoulder and the weapon is being held straight up in the air. All right, the rest of those guys that are not painted yet and still on their sprues are uh, Strelitz Union and they're cast in blue. All right, so I know I'm delayed here just trying to get this thing figured out. Um, five in the back rank, Four in the front rank. I'm sorry, five. Well, yes, the marching, the flag should be in the front with the marching sculpts. So there's a front rank and a back rank. So that's one. A front rank and a back rank for two and a front rank. So I've got these four guys that are just kind of left over, which is fine. All right, let's do some painting. What we're going to do here is we're going to do, let's do the uh, weapons first, mainly because I want to see if this brown actually, now you might say that the the uh, weapons are a light color. Yes, they are. Why? Because painting the barrel, had, which hasn't been done on a lot of these guys, um,
in repainting some of these guys that I did a while ago, actually a long time ago, I'm seeing some errors. And that's another reason why I'm cleaning them up. There might be a little overpainting on the thing that they might be holding, like the flag staff or the the weapon. I'm overpainting it because there are some errors, some spillage from previous painting. Like this guy, for instance, doesn't even have his bayonet painted. I'm being a little picky. That's always the way it begins. And there's running and screaming. Um, I always start with pickiness. And then as speed takes over, uh, cutting down the amount of detail or uh, how fast. And the wall also uh, to be noted is that the paint is not very uh, thin. Okay. So that's one unit right there. That's a painted unit. And that was like, I don't know, two minutes, not even. All right, and that's because it's not all done. So these guys, there's some here that need painting on the blue. So we'll do that because, again, uh, you know, it's a question of pants, weapon, uh, shirt, or uh, jacket, whatever. It's not always a light sky blue for the Confederacy, but let's face it, um, that's what everybody, <laughs> that's what everybody does. Also by adding another paint, the colors become more pronounced. This might be actually a little bit different color than before. But regardless, it makes a nice And I've, you can see I've washed the hats. Didn't quite give them a solid gray. Kind of made them a little brighter because I wanted to see a little bit of brightness coming out of the battlefield. And yes, I did happen to notice that I have painted part of this guy's jacket, which is on his thigh blue and I will have to uh, fix that so it's a question of uh, the Confederacy are they in fact in gray well <laughs> the uniforms became gray over time and uh, what was the intention well the intention was gray but they came they became kind of whitish as the um, colors and this guy is so new that I can go ahead and just be careless or quick with his painting. He's got a big long, that's a frock coat as opposed to a shell jacket. So, and this guy's not done at all. So that's why I can be a little bit quick with him. And these other guys, some of these are metal. Yes, yeah, so you can see I'm starting to get a little careless 
so I will fix as I go along here. I'm going to probably do gray next so I can fix some of these jackets. And sorry if I've moved off camera, it's because I need to look at it. And these kepis, now the Confederacy supplied both gray and blue kepis for the infantry. I'm a little torn on what I should do, but I'm going to just default to the light blue kepi. And the commanders, I think, had either gray, black hats, or I should say dark gray, or um, I'm not sure. They may have had blue hats. I don't know. I don't think so. The generals? I think they had whatever. Okay, so again, there we see some of the guys uh, painted blue. I'm going to touch up some of the gray jackets. I did not grab a gray yet from inventory, which I will do either gray, brown, butternuts, or other. There is a paint called a slate gray, and there is a paint called a mudstone. In some cases, the mudstone is a more accurate dirty gray. Which applied to the figure almost looks like butternut. As a matter of fact, it does. And then the gray hat can be left alone. And as you can see here, I haven't had the details painted of the commanding, uh, the regimental commanders. Um, epaulets or anything of that nature. It's also true that this same color can be used for the figures, haversack, even their canteen. So that's where the problem comes in. The colors are so similar. It's either a white cloth covering on the canteen. Why am I being a little bit picky? Because in the end, the result of that will be beneficial. Let's go look at one of these guys, which I think I overpainted. Yeah. Uh, leave the straps for now. The most important thing here is to get the jackets the correct colors or at least an updated color. As you can see the mudstone has a pretty good effect looking very confederate. It's not that it wasn't regulation it's just that's what it kind of turned out. So, I won't do them all like that, but some of these guys I will. As a matter of fact, some of these guys I'll paint just like this guy right here. I'll paint the blanket. Leave his uniform, his jacket, and just paint the blanket. That way it looks like he's wearing a washed out kind of a... Uh, uniform. Same with this guy. 
All right, so I won't con belay the issue and continue to do this, uh, taking up your time, but this gives you an idea of what's going on. And I will come back as progress continues. Now I see you gotta be careful about their pants. They're still wet. Uh, this guy looks dry. And this guy, for instance, I'll paint his hat. And I will leave his jacket the way it is. All right. So there you go. That's a start. And when they get done, you'll see the results of it. Uh, the faces and the hands, the bayonets.